Hello and welcome to Financial Intelligence. In this video, I want to talk about how the government understates inflation numbers. This opinion is not another conspiracy theory, but it is based on actual facts. The day-to-day -day increase in prices we see add credence to the informal evidence and occasional surveys that indicate the general public believes inflation is running well above official reporting. The government has incentives to keep this statistics as low as possible. In the rest of this video, I'm going to give a quick intro on how the government tracks inflation. Then I'm going to discuss how these numbers are intentionally manipulated to understate the real inflation rates and then finally I'm going to share with you what the real inflation rate is compared to the understated inflation numbers reported by the government. If you like the type of content that I provide, subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up and also hit the notification bell so that you won't miss any of my future videos. Part one, what is the consumer price index? The consumer price index or the CPI for short is the official metric used by the US government to track inflation. The US Bureau of Labor Statistics defines it as a measure of the average change over time in the prices paid by urban consumers for a market basket of consumer goods and services. I will add the link to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics website in the description box below so that you can check it out yourself. The purpose of the consumer price index is to reflect just how much inflation is eaten into both our incomes and our savings. The CPI is perhaps one of the most important government statistics because it affects a number of public programs and it is used as a benchmark to set public policy. But its accuracy is questionable, especially when compared with unofficial and unbiased inflation numbers. Part 2. How does CPI understate real inflation? The CPI would have been an accurate measure of inflation if it had tracked the price changes of a fixed basket of goods. In other words, it is logical to assume that for the CPI to be a fair measure, the basket of goods for which the prices are being tracked should not change over time. However, the government makes the assumption that if prices rise and consumers substitute products, the CPI formula should be adjusted to reflect these consumer spending habit changes. For example, assume that the basket of goods for which the CPI is being calculated includes apples but not oranges. Further, assume that all of a sudden the apple prices start going up while the orange prices stay the same. If consumers change their behavior in response to this economic change and increase their orange consumption, the government would replace apples with oranges in their CPI basket. As a result, the price increase in apples will be omitted from their CPI calculations. Not a very accurate way to measure inflation. The bottom line is that the CPI is not a measurement of rising prices, rather it tracks consumer spending patterns that change as prices change. Part 3. Real inflation numbers without the adjustments. The numbers the government pumps out today are the result of changes made in the 1990s when political Washington moved to change the nature of the CPI. The contention was that the CPI overstated inflation by not allowing for the substitution of less expensive products such as hamburgers for more expensive products such as steak. 
over the past 30 years, the government has changed the way it calculates inflation more than 20 times. These methodological improvements to the CPI are set to give a more accurate measure of consumer prices. However, these changes could also be a convenient way to include or exclude certain products that give favorably low results, but there is no way to know given the lack of transparency. There's actually an interesting website called Shadow Government Statistics, www.shadowstats.com, that reports the CPI numbers without the modifications made by the government. I have borrowed a chart from their website that shows an estimate of inflation for today as if it were calculated the same way it was in 1990s. I will add the link to this chart in the description box below so that you can check it out. In the chart, the blue line labeled as SGS alternate CPI reflects the CPI as if it were calculated using the methodologies in place in 1980s. On the other hand, the red line labeled as CPI-U represents the official CPI numbers reported by the government. As you can see, the real inflation rate is almost twice of the officially reported inflation rate. In summary, methodological shifts in government reporting have depressed reported inflation, moving the concept of the CPI away from being a measure of the cost of living needed to maintain a constant standard of living. I hope that you like this video. If you have any recommendation or suggestion, add them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel and also hit the notification bell so that you won't miss any of my future videos. Thank you and take care.